I know it's controversial, but I'm just gonna say it. Traditional wireframing is overrated. Especially for landing page design, where complexity usually is very low. So in this video, I will show you how you can save time by replacing traditional wireframing when creating landing pages. But before I show you exactly how to do it in Figma, let's do a speed listen on wireframes. The job of wireframes is to give us a sense of what content is needed, what elements are needed, and what will a visual structure look like. It's basically a designer's version of an architect's blueprint. The problem with the traditional way for landing pages is that wireframes are usually too low in fidelity to yield me a realistic design structure. And in most cases, I will have to change the design down the line anyways. So, enter Frankenstein wireframes. A high fidelity, visual and structural reference of what we want, a super fast workflow and responsive design references for free. Now let's jump into Figma so that I can show you exactly how I use the technique. Okay, so the first thing that I do when it comes to Frankenstein wireframing is that I collect screen dumps. So I go into my favorite inspiration sources. It could be Lapa.ninja, for example. I pick the sites I like, I add them into new tabs. Then I go into the actual websites and I go into the inspector tool and choose the dimensions I want. So 1440 pixels usually for desktop, 375 pixels for mobile. And then I just take screenshots. And the screenshots would look something like this. You can see that I have the URL. If I wanna go back and see what kind of website it was, it might not be as easy if we don't have the nav in the screenshots. So I wanna be able to go back and reference it. And then I choose the dimensions in the inspector tool. So I would change the dimensions to be responsive. Then I would choose my dimensions here in this field. And I would choose 75% in zoom instead of 50% because I wanna make sure that we can actually see all the details in the screenshots. I would do the same thing for mobile, but I would choose 375 pixels in dimensions instead, but still 75% zoom and still showing the URL. Once that's done, I move over to the second step, which is basically just cropping the images and then resizing them. And this is super easily done in Figma. So let me try to do it live here for you guys. I take the image, I go to the image fill here, I go to this option that now says crop. Usually it says fill. We change from fill to crop, and then we can crop it by just moving these handles. I would do the same for the mobile version. Change to crop, crop it like this. I'm not gonna be super, super specific or detailed here. Then I would take these, change them to the correct dimensions. So 375 for mobile and 1440 for desktop. And that's what I do for every single section. So once I've done that for every single section, I would place them like this. I would take every single section. So let's say we've done it for a bunch of sections. I would take them, place them like this, target them and create auto layouts for them. I call this desktop for the desktop version. I would do the same for the mobile version. So create an auto layout with this, call it um, mobile, like that. And then we would end up with something like this. Auto layouts with all of the sections. And now this looks like a real website, right? And this is what we wanna achieve. This is a visual representation of what we want our website to look like. So the next step, drag them over here. And now it's time to start designing. So what I usually do is I take this desktop auto layout, I target it, I create a frame on top of it, and I call that frame desktop again. You can call it desktop container if you wanna separate the naming. Then I would take the desktop auto layout, I would lock it, 
and I would decrease the opacity of it. Why do I do that? Well, because when we start designing on top of these landing pages, we don't want to be distracted by the screenshots. We want to use them as a reference, but we don't want them to distract us. So we lock it so we won't move it by accident and we decrease the opacity so that they don't distract us. And then I would just start designing. Now I've already designed the nav here, but as you can see, and this is an important point as well, I'm not just taking the exact design and copying it straight up. I'm doing my own version of it. So in this case with the nav here, maybe what I like is this just a structure of having the logo type here and then having the menu. But my implementation is different. I'm using different colors. I'm using a different font, etc., etc. So we don't steal, but we take inspiration from these things. The same with the mobile version. Of course, we would decrease the opacity. First of all, we would create the frame, call it mobile container, do the exact same thing, go in here, lock this, decrease the opacity, and do the exact same thing for the mobile version. Now, if you're using Figma to design, I suggest you check out my master Figma playlist where I cover anything and everything on Figma. Now, until the next one, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.